Hello, kitties. This is your good uncle, Mr. Christopher Walken. All right. Um, I'm here today because a good friend of mine wanted me to read you a little story that their friend wrote. And I think it's okay. You might get more out of it than me. I'm an old man. Just turned 70 recently. It was fun. Not really. Can't do much when you're 70. Sit around. Go have breakfast at IHOP or something. Anyhow, moving on. This one is called How the Skunk Got His Smell and a Stripe Down His Back. And I'm looking at the photo here. Is a skunk. He's doing something nasty. All right, moving on. The next page. This says, how the skunk got his smell and a stripe down his back. Okay, now here we have a photo, some arrows pointing to two different skunks. That's nice. One of them is labeled boy and the other girl. I can guess where this story is going right here from the beginning, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. This book is dedicated to Miss Giardina, hope I'm saying that right, my fourth grade teacher. She sounds like a good teacher. Hope she was nice. Okay, and here we go. Once there was a skunk that was named Roxy. He was ugly, and his nickname was the bully. He was the biggest, the meanest, and the baddest bully in Skunk Village. And everyone in Skunk Village was blue. I don't get how that's relevant. That's like saying the munchkins. In Munchkinland, their favorite color is blue. Glinda says that. Watch the Wizard of Oz again. It's hard to believe. Anyhow, one day when he was taking his walk, he met someone in his path. No one ever stood in Roxy's path. And he said in his meanest, bulliest voice, Get out of my path! The stranger said, No, you are not nice to me. He just yelled at me. Of course you're not nice. I shall have to curse you. Roxy was cursed with not being able to fight anymore. Since the other skunk didn't say anything like abracadabra, Roxy tried to fight. The other skunk was really a wizard, so this is gonna turn out bad. The wizard kicked Roxy's butt. Ho oh, ho, don't miss, don't mess with wizard kids now. You run into a wizard on the street, you turn around and walk the other direction. Cause wizards, they're bad. They're bad. And when the wizard punched Roxy, Roxy flew all the way to New Zealand and landed in a garbage truck. Nice timing. Oh, I could see this being a very, very big thing to do if Roxy were in the United States at the time. However, if Roxy and this wizard met on the street in, like, Sydney, Australia, I bet a wizard could probably dock him to New Zealand. It's not that far. Nice timing. In the garbage truck, there was the worst, the smelliest, and the slimiest stuff on earth. Oh, this smells bad. When all the garbage was picked up and was on top of Roxy, the garbage man drove all the garbage to the dump. What the garbage man did there was dump all the garbage in a humongous pile about 3,000 feet tall. Wow, that's tall. Think humongous spelled wrong. But you're in fourth grade, so I'll give you a pass on that one. It's okay. And since Roxy was in the middle of all the garbage, he had to climb through the garbage 1,000 and so steps. This sounds like a lot of garbage, folks. Bet you couldn't even find that much near Alice's restaurant. That's another 18-minute story. We'll talk about that one later. When he got to the top of the garbage, at last, he knew it was the smelliest place on Earth. And then he took a step forward on the flat top and slipped. Oh, but when he slipped, it was near the edge, so he had to slide 3,000 feet down, screaming all the way. And since he went so fast, the smell on the garbage rubbed off on him, and he almost caught on fire. Wow, that's fast. Get garbage friction. Catch fire. Yeesh. Now, he was the smelliest thing on Earth. Well, I bet so. 3,000 foot tall pile of garbage. You gotta be smelly. When he wanted to go home, no taxis would take him because he was so smelly. That's sad. That's sad. Okay. Poor old Roxy had to walk all the way home. And anyways, while he was walking, he had to listen to people saying, What are you? And you're the smelliest thing I ever smelt. 
Finally, he reached Skunk Village. He saw the same old skunk again. Yeah. Okay. And he wanted to fight, uh, so Roxy lifted up his tail to whack him. But the, the smell on him was so strong that the wizard fainted. Heesh. <laughs> Whoa, fainting wizard. If you have this power, maybe you should go for a wizard fight. If you don't, again, walk away. And Roxy said, this serves you right. The next day, while he was walking, the wizard's ghost came back to haunt Roxy. The wizard still had his magic, and Roxy didn't see him, so he put a clumsy curse on Roxy. And uh, since Roxy was walking and wasn't looking, he tripped over a bucket that had white paint in it. Oh, I, I see what we're doing here. Yep, he's a skunk. Okay. And uh, the bucket of white paint flew in the air and it spilt a white line on his back. That's impressive. If it just manages to stripe a white line just from being spilt as opposed to going all over him like crazy. This story depends a lot on coincidence and luck. Just like most, actually, when you think about it. Huh. Three years later, he got married to a black skunk, as I'm guessing he started out as. Hmm. The girls are black and the boys are blue. Oh, okay. The boys are blue. Okay. I get it now. You don't have to watch The Wizard of Oz now. It's okay. All right. Then uh, she had a son who took after his father in the smell and the stripe and took after his mother by blackness. That's interesting. I like this. This good show that you can be with whoever you want to. That's nice. From then on, Every skunk had a terrible smell at either a stripe or polka dots on his or her back. That's fun. I haven't seen a polka dotted skunk, but I look forward to it. I bet a polka dotted skunk would just be as fun as a barrel of monkeys. At the end. Oh, that's interesting. We're at the end of the story. Okay. Here's another photo. I think it's of a description of the trash mountain scene. You remember that one where they had the, like, the 3,000 foot tall trash thing? And Roxy, I think it is, he's screaming, ah! There's another skunk, um, I think it's a skunk, he's at the bottom. And it looks like he's doing something really nasty with himself. But this is elementary school paper, so we'll, we'll talk about that one when you get older. Okay. About the author, I was eight years old when I wrote this book. I like to do gymnastics and I like sports, as most kids should, need to get out, exercise. I get good grades and I'm very creative. Oh, you just, you're an all around cool person. How about that? I love to write. So you're an intellectual too. You just got everything going for you, don't you? My name is Candice Arlene Rarick. Probably should have put that at the beginning, but once again, you're in fourth grade, so I'll give you a pass. This, I think, has been a real fun time. Sorry we couldn't get to any of the things I said we'd talk about, but I'm out of time here. So I hope you have a good time. Bye, kitties.